Hey, what's up, everybody? So back in January of 2015, I uploaded a video called Review of the World's Cheapest Studio Monitors for Monoprice. What I did was I purchased these 8-inch studio speakers, which I still have today. I tried them out and did my review on them. And to this day, I am still using those speakers, which is almost four years later. And I'm really happy with them. I even use them with the subwoofer. And I use them calibrated with a DBX drive rack so that I get the flattest response with them. I love these monitors, they are great. The subwoofer's pretty optional. And during the time I bought them for 250 bucks for the pair, which makes them the cheapest studio monitor on the market for the size, which is eight inch. They are based on the M-Audio BX8s, which are $250 each, twice the price. They're like a generic version rebranded for mono price. A couple years later, which I think about two years ago or maybe less than two years ago, not exactly sure. Monoprice released a new model, which I'm not sure if it's based on any other speaker, but they came out with a new studio monitor, which is a 6.5 inch studio speaker that is um, configured as a coaxial speaker, meaning the tweeter is inside the subwoofer. Now the advantage to that is the dispersion of bass and treble is even from wherever you're standing or wherever you're listening from, because the tweeter and the woofer are coming from the same exact spot. And this coaxial studio monitor came out for about $299. So they're $300 speakers. They cost a lot more than the 8-inch studio monitors. Right now, the 8-inch studio monitors are on sale for about $170. And one of the things I was thinking about doing was doing a 5.1 surround setup in my studio for when I'm scoring film or when I'm doing film. And then what I saw a couple weeks ago was the coaxial speakers that are normally $299 came down to $99 for a pair. I was sitting on them. I was like thinking about, uh, should I get the coaxial speakers? They're supposedly a better monitor than the eight inch studio speakers. And then I saw them go back up to $299. So I missed my chance. Then another week later, which was about a couple days ago, I saw the coaxial studio monitor go back down to $99 a pair. So I decided to buy three pairs of the coaxial studio monitor. Over here for 300 bucks total, I got six studio monitors. I don't know how they sound. I'm gonna try them out. So today we're gonna unbox them and see how a pair of them sound. Right now, I don't have an interface to do the 5.1 setup. But since I didn't want to sleep on the sale, I decided to get all six that I need. Since I don't have a proper audio interface yet to support surround sound, I won't be able to try the surround setup yet. But I need at least five monitors for the surround setup, but they only come in pairs, so I got six. I'll have an extra one in case I break any of them. So today we're going to unbox these, try them out, and see how they sound. Funny story about this box cutter. When I bought those old American audio speakers, we found this box cutter inside a brand new pair of speakers. Those were the same speakers that were stolen out of my garage. Just like the eight inch monitors, they are boxed in one box, but they have a smaller box in each one for each speaker. So I'm just gonna open them inside the box. These boxes are definitely significantly smaller than the eight inch because they are smaller speakers. I would imagine they won't pump out as much bass, but we'll see. Okay, so we got, oh, we got pads, sticky pads for the underside of the monitor. And we got the manual, it's kind of dirty. You can kind of see it. Okay, so I'm gonna pull out the speaker. It's wrapped, so I know it's brand new. Okay, power cable. I'm kind of a pack rat with boxes because during transport, let's say I move, I like to put all this stuff back in the boxes and that's how I move them. Especially when you got exposed woofers and tweeters, you don't want to accidentally push them in or damage them. The way this is wrapped shows me that this is not, um, it hasn't been opened. I 
Okay, so the way this monitor looks, it looks like it's just a woofer, but there's actually a tweeter in the center, a soft cone tweeter. It's a lot smaller than the eight inch. It's almost like half the size, but the rear is almost identical to the eight inch with one little bonus feature. It has the high frequency adjust, just like on the eight inch speakers, um, the volume control and the the separate XLR and a balanced quarter inch inputs. But now unlike the old eight and five inch speakers, it now also has an RCA input. So if you wanted to go from a small RCA output from a, like a small device, your computer or your DJ gear, you could go direct RCA in. So what's cool with this, since it has an identical um, input and power, all I have to do is pull out the eight inch and plug this right in and it should take me a couple minutes. So I'm gonna pull out the eight inch and we're gonna actually just um, set them on top side by side so you can see the difference. All right, so as you can see, the 6.5 inch coaxial speaker is significantly smaller than the eight inch, definitely shorter and it's definitely slimmer than the eight inch speaker. So theoretically, the coaxial speaker is not gonna pump out as much bass. However, I am using a subwoofer, so that shouldn't matter. I'm actually looking forward to using a smaller speaker, so I'm not rocking the whole house when I'm working later at night. And it'll also save some room when I set up the 5.1 um, setup. And then for the eight inch, I'm deciding if I'm gonna do it as a second monitor, or if I'm gonna move it over to my DJ gear desk and have it as closer near field monitors so I don't have to play them from all the way across the room. So, all right, so let's open the rest of them and see how this goes. Okay, this one looks good. Pretty clean on all sides. Oh, another thing to note, porthole is on the front, which I think is actually a good thing because you're not throwing bass against the wall. Uh, we'll see how it sounds. I know I still have to calibrate it, but I'm going to try to start by matching the settings from the eight inch speakers onto the back of the coaxial ones. The volume is set at exactly 12 o'clock and the high frequency control is adjusted all the way to plus one db okay first thing i noticed when i turned on the speaker and i turned it off is unlike the eight inch speakers they don't do a popping sound when you shut them off it's not really like a really loud popping sound that happens with the eight inch where you can break them but it's always been something I noticed that kind of makes me a little worried about them. I always believed that was part of the design of the eight inch because both of them do it, but the coaxial ones do not do that. So one small nitpicky thing about the coaxial speakers I actually don't like is I don't like the fact that they don't have a power indicator LED in the front. Um, just small little thing, just to tell me that they're on. And uh, I just wish they kept that, but no big deal. So right now you can see they're a lot smaller in my setup. So let's calibrate them. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a decibel reading app and I'm going to make sure that these two speakers are properly balanced. I'm gonna do that by playing pink noise one at a time at each speaker, panning one and the other and making sure that they read exactly the same. And I'm gonna adjust in the back to make sure that they're right on the money. Oh, another thing I notice is that because of their smaller profile, they're right at ear level with me, which is a good thing. So let's look for my DB reading up. I'm gonna set my phone just on top of my chair, uh, dead center, and then I'm gonna take a couple readings. I have a pink noise loaded on Ableton. I'm gonna set it to the SL3, which is my interface. 
And another thing I got to do is I got to make sure that the subwoofer is bypassed and I have a foot switch for that so that I'm only getting audio directly from the speakers. Oh, funny, this whole time, my left and rights were reversed and I had no idea. It's reading 91 on the left side and it's reading 91 on the right side. And I want to make sure that the subwoofer is balanced with the speakers. The point where I want the volume of the speakers to reach is to a level where when I'm flipping between bypassing the subwoofer and having the full system on, I could barely tell that the subwoofer isn't even there. That's the sweet spot you want to be at. So currently I have the subwoofer bypass. <laughs> First thing I noticed with that sound test is that I can hear more clarity where it's more detailed, but it really significantly lacks a lot of low end, which I'm going to need the sub for. So let's try turning on the sub. There we go. Yeah, so when I'm A being between bypass sub and having the sub with the crossover and the speakers, I can just tell that it feels like it adds a little bit more low end. It's just adding to a missing frequency range. Now, the thing is, these are smaller speakers from the eight inch. You can tell that there is a wider frequency range missing from the low end. So these will definitely be more dependent on the subwoofer. However, what's good is that I can play a little louder at night with the subwoofer bypass and it's not gonna rumble the whole house. They sound fairly even. I'm gonna find out uh, if they are once I do the calibration on the DBX drive rack where we're going to uh, correct the room frequencies. So we're gonna do that now. So basically we're gonna bring out the Behringer measuring condenser microphone again. So, and for those of you who didn't see my home studio build, which is a five part series where I built this whole studio, the reason why I'm using a DBX drive rack, which is a unit not really made for a studio, is because it does have a room correction function inside it where I can flatten the frequencies uh, of any peaks and valleys that's being caused by the shape of the room. So the goal is, is to actually just set this basically where your ears are gonna be. So wherever I'm sitting right here should be right there. So this is where I'm gonna mount it using my stand. And then I'm gonna grab an XLR cable so I can connect it to the drive rack. The cool thing about the drive rack is that you have options for what kind of curve you want. And I don't do the perfectly flat straight line. I think super, super flat is not comfortable to my ears. I tend to compensate when I do a mix down. So what I do like is I like a little bit more bass and just a little less treble where it's an S curve where it's shaped like this. So what we're trying to achieve here is not so much to make it perfectly flat. We're getting rid of all the spikes and valleys inside the way the room frequency responds. So what's going to happen next is it's going to generate a pink noise and the drive rack is going to take the reading from the microphone and compensate for any peaks and valleys so that it will follow the curve more evenly. And once again, I've mentioned this before, the reason why I like doing hardware on the room correction is because even if I don't have my DAW open, unlike software where it only works through your DAW, I can actually run anything through my mixer, including my keyboards, my instruments, and it's running the room correction. I noticed that these speakers look different on the EQ chart. Uh, on the graphic EQ, the settings are a little different. They're up and down at different frequencies from the eight inch speakers, so they do respond a little differently. Let's try playing a song on it. <laughs> I'm gonna turn off the EQ and see how it sounds. So between the room correction on 
compared to when it's off. It sounds a little brighter and more clear. Uh, a little bit more in your face. Could be a little uncomfortable for some folks. When it's off, it's a little bit more pleasant to the ears, which, you know, has more of a scoop mid sound. But so far, I do really like how they sound. I'm going to have to try this out over time. I can't just judge it with, you know, a couple sound samples. Going to have to try to produce with it. But I believe that these just based on the readings and based on what i'm hearing initially the coaxial speakers have a more flatter and accurate response compared to the eight inch monitors so so far i would say these are great for clarity um and they're great when used with the subwoofer by themselves not a lot of bass but like i said it's the most you can expect from a 6.5 inch speaker. It's so crazy because like when you look at it, it looks like a woofer with no tweeter, but those highs are really, really in there. So yeah, this is my unboxing demo and review of the Monoprice coaxial studio speakers. I don't wanna say they are the cheapest studio monitors like the eight inch because they're normally priced at 299, but during the time I bought them, they are the cheapest studio monitors during the sale. And these are definitely the most inexpensive coaxial studio monitor on the market right now. But, and I have to do a little bit more research on them because unlike the eight inch and the five inch monitors that were based on the BX series by M Audio, I have not seen a counterpart to the coaxial monitors from anyone else. I didn't see it in M Audio. They're definitely not like the ones from Personas. So these are kind of unique to me and they sound really good. In a couple months, hopefully I have a Thunderbolt interface with multiple outputs and we can finally do the 5.1 system here. Also in the next couple of weeks, I'm gonna be switching out these monitors with the other four that I have to make sure they work and to also make sure that they all sound the same. So yeah, hope you guys enjoy this video. If you've tried these monitors or have any questions, be sure to leave them in the comments below. If it's your first time here and you found this video helpful, be sure to hit that subscribe button. And don't forget to click that little bell icon so that you get a notification the next time I upload a video. All right, guys, really appreciate you guys for watching. Take care.